Recorded live at Tox and Tasting Studios, it's the Clerical Errors Podcast. The podcast that shows you what's behind the collar. Let's go. All right. From the Tox and Tasting Studios. In exile. This is, in exile. This is Berg. <laughs> why why Wait. do I do that? <laughs> well, that that's is Berg. A, yeah, I am Berg. <laughs> I am And you're Bullhagen. <laughs> and Peter's here today, too. And uh, welcome to the show. A lot, a lot has happened since we last recorded an episode, Berg, wouldn't you say? I would say so. <laughs> yeah, do it's... Wanna, uh, do you want to tell them about it? Well, we... Uh, um, by the way, it's weird not seeing your face, Berg. I kind of go I'm off th- your fi- my facial reaction. I am there in spirit, so... <laughs> Yeah, so I am in the Toxin Tasting Studio by myself, which is weird. And uh, mm-hmm. Berg is in his secluded. Um, where where exactly are you, Berg? It's a secret location that I like to call Patmos. Okay. <laughs> so let the reader understand. Does that, does that mean you're the, the last remaining pastor in the area? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say last. Maybe you know, but yes. <laughs> We are in exile because and, uh, of something known as the COVID nineteen virus. Co- so. are we, now we got to make sure we're going to call it COVID nineteen, the coronavirus, the China virus, so the so we, the correct way the Wu Tang to, to the Wu Tang virus. <laughs> yeah. ah. the correct way to refer to it is COVID nineteen. COVID standing for coronavirus nineteen. <laughs> okay, or sorry, the coronavirus disease. 19. So that's why you wouldn't, you don't call it the COVID-19 virus because that's like calling it the ATM machine. It's just an ATM. Well, it's, it's kind of like saying, um, the TLH. Right. right. That's right. Cause that's the, the Lutheran hit or, uh, like, uh, A- the, anyway, know. we're, we're getting off track here. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's keep it moving. <laughs> so yes, we are practicing our social, so, so, we are practicing our social distancing. Uh, but we still have to get the podcast out, right? That's right. People are counting on this. There's extra time. <coughs> By the so, way, I want I want to mention to our, our listeners, um, we do have probably over 50 hours of content now, right? So if you know anyone who uh, is bored, let them know. We've got 50 hours of content on our podcast. That is true. So uh, uh, all sorts of different things. So please... Feel free to let others know about this. So, and then not only that, um, I don't know about St. Paul's, but uh, Trinity, we, we are recording services for output on the radio, and I'm thinking about opening up another podcast feed here so we can get the uh, services sent to everybody directly. Uh, more info on that coming soon. All right. So if you want if you want services to listen to or maybe even watch, we're working on video. Uh, stay tuned. All right. So uh, um, what I did for uh, my oh, do you have a beverage with you, Berg? I do. I made myself an old fashioned. Wow. <laughs> Look at you. So. Well, now what's in know. an old fa- an old fashioned? So well, you can you can drink more freely from that because you are in a secluded location. I am. I am. In, so, in my studio, I can't necessarily make mixed drinks. <laughs> so what I did is, uh, since I don't have any simple syrup, I uh, I put a, a sugar cube in with some bitters, and I you know muddled it all up, and then I put in my ice, and then I put my bourbon in there, good bourbon. Um, oh, well, you're not normally trace. a bourbon guy either. Nope, I'm not. Then I had a little bit of orange peel that I used to garnish it, so. Man, how'd you get all that stuff while you're in lockdown? See, I was prepared. <laughs> I mean, I, I I have been waiting for a day like this where I can just <laughs> stay home, smoke meat, drink good beverages, write poetry, you know? Yeah. Sounds more like a vacation. So You just have to rephrase it, you know? <laughs> By the way, look I at wanna... all the opportunities. I want to mention Berg that uh, and Peter. I want to compliment you both. Um, the uh, the opening to uh, the last episode from the Toxin Tastings event 
um, where you're telling jokes, the way, Peter, you put that together and the way you tell those jokes and to hear everyone laughing, that brings joy to my heart to listen to that. So. <laughs> Anyways, so today. That's a little condescending. <laughs> ah. Are you are you drinking anything there, Bullhagen? No, I am not. And I should be because my voice is exhausted. <laughs> and Vicar's not here. Vicar is uh his voice was a little tired too. Vicar's kinda liking this in the sense that he's like on Zoom, he's put in a Bible study no Zoom, not Zoom, uh, the other one, Loom. Loom? Okay. He put a Bible together on study on Loom and he's teaching uh, the sixth and seventh graders on, on Loom. And um, I'm not doing that <laughs> Be- because <laughs> maybe you should be drinking the old fashioned, right? Well, well, I keep Peter busy enough already with this thing and the services that he's put together for us that uh, I can't ask him to get figure that out for me too. So, you know, Anna, especially since I've never heard of Loom or whatever you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, because we started recording services on YouTube, you know, for YouTube uh, mm-hmm. a long time ago, and so. We, the, our church literally, literally has hundreds of hours of stuff you can watch, which is awesome. So There you go. Oh, by the way, Peter, what are you drinking? I've got a uh, Hubert's Lemonade, Strawberry Lemonade. All right. Comes in a glass bottle. Pretty Classy. fancy. <laughs> so um, the, the topic that we are going to talk about, and to be honest, Berg, I'm going to moment... I had some ideas, just some things I wanted to get off my chest with this, uh, um, this uh, Wu Tang virus. Okay. Um, COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. Okay, so the COVID nineteen, because uh, I just had a few things I just wanted to get off my chest. Okay, and the topic today is going to be family devotions, and I want, if Peter, if you can put a link of it, actually, because we are going to talk about family devotions today. And I was going to talk about some how to maybe you can get those things going. But there's actually our synod put out uh, some video, a video to get it going. And that's where I like to direct people. Have you seen this, Berg? Uh, was that Pastor Denzer? Yes. Yeah, it was really good. And, and so what I would like to do is, is f- for, the, for that aspect of it is I want to encourage people to go to that because I want to keep a clear message. And if that's what people are watching and listening I want to direct it to them. So, Peter, um, when this podcast's out, do you think you could put a link to that? Sure. That's what I do. And uh, by the way, uh, along those lines, I wanted to mention while we're still at the beginning of the episode that uh, we had a few people message uh, message us about our blessings episode. Oh. We talked about the top blessings. Oh, we completely dropped the ball. Yeah. We had a, a few people message. I've got a, an email here from Greg. It says, my choice for number one blessing is Moses' blessing to Aaron and his sons, or better known to most Lutherans as the benediction. Okay. Or as I just learned, the Aaronic benediction. So yes. that was, we had several people message in with that same uh, sentiment that we definitely missed that one. All right. So um, why don't we go ahead and move on to the top 12. Uh, Peter, play the intro. Enough nonsense. It's time for Bullhagen's Top 12. All right. So um, as we, we talk about, uh, Berg will be talking about family devotions uh, in his campfire um, catechesis. Um, I just, this being um, our first episode where after it really everything got shut down, right? Berg? Yep. And uh, I just thought, I just had some top 12 thoughts about this, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because I, I just wanted to address it and talk about it. And some of it's in a lighthearted manner, um, but uh, um, but I kind of really wanted to get this, this if you don't mind uh, indulging me with this, Berg. But uh, just some top 12 Bullhagen's thoughts on what's going on right now. Does that sound cool with you, Berg? Sounds awesome. By the way, I can tell when one of your members listens to the show. Do you know why? Why is that? It's happened like on three or four occasions. I'll bump into them somewhere. Well, not recently because, you know, we're all separated. I would see them somewhere and they'd say, hey, Bullhagen. <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> they call me Bullhagen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like they must listen to the show. <laughs> that funny? That it is. <laughs> Do you ever get it the other way around, there, Berg? No, actually, I guess I'm not as popular. <laughs> what is I, I was quarantining before it was cool. <laughs> so my top twelve f- thoughts on this whole uh, uh, COVID nineteen. Number twelve. I don't like this. <laughs> is that fair? Yeah, it's pretty fair. We didn't ask for this, man. I mean, and it, some of these will reflect this, but uh, um, uh, we we obviously became pastors to to get the word out, and we're trying to find new ways. But you know, it's just not not the same, man. And uh, um. You know, we want to go out and help people and, and visit them. That's our first, our nature to do that, and we can't. Yeah, it's hard for us. I mean, we joke about it being a vacation and stuff, but it really isn't. I mean, this is really antithetical to what we were called to do. Yeah, and and so, um, and so it's it's really I think been a struggle for all pastors. We're worried about the future. We're worried about Easter. Um, we're worried about. Uh, as much as we're on multimedia things, um, it's it's not it's not the same. You know, listening to something is not like receiving. It's not like uh, absolving. It's not receiving the body and blood of Jesus. And and the fact that right, you know the the gospel and the work of the church is a very physical thing. You know, when Jesus when Jesus um appeared to Thomas, he said, you know, put your finger in the in the holes where my hands were reach out your hand, put it in, in, in my side. Or or Jesus, you know, healed a, a blind man by using his own saliva and making mud and putting it on his eyes. Or the, even the Lord's Supper, the very nature of it is receiving the very body and blood, a very intimate, physical thing. And, uh, and, and that's, I guess, one of my fears is that, you know, we could learn new things, but we also can learn a lot of bad habits about, about how we do church, you know, that yeah. make it more a virtual thing. Virtual church is really about as real as virtual relationships. And uh, if you want to know more about what I'm talking about, I wrote a, an essay on that, um, and it's uh, published to the uh, Steadfast Lutheran's blog. So check that out. We'll uh, put a link to it up on the Facebook page. Number 11. Multimedia is very helpful, but it can never replace a face-to-face ministry. Yep. So. And uh, that's what we're going to be struggling with for sure. Number 10. Support your church. Um, it's uh, Offerings are going to suffer. And a lot, of, a lot of churches are worried about that. Yeah, there are a lot of small congregations that are worried about not reopening. And, yeah, because I mean, there's a lot of talk about restaurants and those things, small businesses, but... You know, churches run on such a razor-thin budget. You know, right. there's not a lot of extra money going around in most churches that I know. If there is extra money, they find uses for it. You know, if there's extra, if they have a year where they're doing better, then they actually catch up on maintenance things that they've been meaning to do but didn't have the money. Or if there there are certain, you know, if people have extra money, you know, they might find missions to give it to, you know. And and so there really isn't a lot of extra money sitting around for a lot of churches, and uh, you know with the price of uh, of health insurance and all those things, um, a lot of churches if if you go three four weeks without the, the steady income that they're used to, they're in big trouble. A lot of them are going to be in big trouble. Right. And that's concerning. Number nine. This reminds us to repent. <laughs> That's not something I'm seeing too often. Are you, Berg? The, the idea of when, when something like this happens, um, there's a bib- very, very biblical way of understanding that, that times like this is a time of repentance. Um, you see this in the miracles. What do, when there's a miracle, what do people say, ask Jesus? They say, uh, Jesus, Master, have mercy. Their, their condition reminds them the need of repentance and their need of mercy 
of God, and I'm not seeing a lot of that. Are you? Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people will want to blame this on the devil. And the thing is, is that, uh, you know, God is almighty, and we actually have to wrestle with that, that God is the one who sends these things. He may permit the devil to do this, uh, but it's a very, very unpopular opinion that God actually sends these things to bring us to repentance. But he does so in the Old Testament all the time. Right. And also in the New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. And these calamities should always drive us to repentance. And think about it. Think of all of the idols that have been smashed in the last two weeks. All, yeah. all, you know, all the bars are closed. Uh, all the theaters are closed. All the restaurants are closed. All the sporting events are closed. Um, the sex work worker stuff is really suffering, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, really what's left? Church. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Right. So and and, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's uh, that's ex exactly right. And it it and and so we can use this as an opportunity to to grow, right? To, f to find new 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 things and and better ways to to do that. So number eight. So is using a uh, a Chuck Norris total gym style thing is that considered clanging and banging? <laughs> It depends on how no how much noise you make. Because <laughs> I'm missing working out, man. That's my stress reliever. Yeah. The gym's you to, closed. You have to look online and see if uh, you know if there are exercises you can do at home, right? Yeah, there are, but they're not the same. Do you know what I even did? I actually, I actually uh, I googled uh, a prison workout. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> because like those guys are ripped, man. You, oh. you almost have to be. <laughs> I just did that. <laughs> That's staying in. <laughs> For anybody who didn't realize, he accidentally summoned his voice assistant. <laughs> because, you know, those guys are ripped. They Anyways. are. So, yeah, I ordered, uh, I ordered like, a hundred bucks, uh, um, one of these uh, total gyms type things where you're you're on the you're on a seat that's on rollers. Oh right. Yeah, and I'm and I'm wondering maybe uh, if if there's a huge clamor from our audience members, maybe I'll post a picture of me <laughs> using it. But I was wondering if that qualifies as clanging and banging. Oh. So why not? Number seven. Your pastor was not called to be a televangelist. And, and what, what prompted me to say this is this, is there's a lot of rush, I think, uh, to, to do everything we can from a multimedia standpoint to do these things. And, and I think it takes the, 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 the church person to realize that their pastor may not be good with that, and that's okay. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. You, you know what I mean? Because, you know, um, every pastor is kind of rushing, well, we can do this, we can do that, we can do that. But... It really can take away from what we really should be doing. It can take away from our study and, and just make us into tech wizards, which we really shouldn't have right. to be. But at the same time, I do think that hopefully this will open some eyes and guys will start using some of these things for their own congregation. Right. You know, Cause, I, cause... I, I hope so, because um, there are a lot of people who listen to podcasts. There are a lot of people who, you know... If it doesn't take you very long to do a devotion online, you know, five minutes or whatever, like I did a, I did a, uh, I calculated it once. If every per, if every pastor did like, even if a hundred pastors did five minutes, um, every week for an online thing, that'd be like four hours in a year, you know? So, yeah. you know, it's just like, guys, come on, you know, let's kind of, kind of like we, we talked about with the, the podcast that, you know, we're at this about a year now. And we've got over 50 hours of content. But yeah, if your pastor isn't a whiz, and if his uh, services look more like a Bin Laden hos hostage video, uh, you know, <laughs> cut him some slack. Yeah. He's cause, trying. Cause my heart, because I am, I am transitioning from that, that younger pastor to that older pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the listener knows how much I, for this podcast, I rely on my son, Peter, right? And my heart goes out to the pastors who are older than me. 
and who have no idea right. how to do these things. Because right. guys, it, guys, we've had like four days to get all this stuff together. And if you weren't already doing some of this stuff, it's a daunting task. But yeah, my heart really goes out because, because so, so listener, you know, um, bear that in mind about your pastor and take it with some, some grace because, you know, some guys are going to be good at this. Some churches are going to be good at this. Some pastors are, and some are not, but that's okay. You know, you know, it's, uh, you know, they're making an effort, but my heart really goes out to the pastors in that situation. Number six. Stay, I think it's important in this to stay rooted with your church. And if you don't have one, find one. The reason why yep. I say that is, is, um, you know, you're going to have, your church is going to have stuff out. My church is going to have stuff out. Every church is going to be posting on Facebook, putting a, either a YouTube video. Uh, we're throwing stuff on the, on the podcast. And, and um, it's important for your church members to be clued into that. And certainly, if it's uh, from a Missouri Synod church, it's something that you can trust. Um, but the, the one you, you should trust the most in all those is your church with your pastor. And not to think, oh, I'm going to go to, the, I, I hear this service better. I like the way they do it. And it could actually wind up, in a way, isolating you from your own church. So it's good to listen to other sermons and listen to other Bible studies because there's a lot of, of them out there. But the first and foremost thing, it's really important to stay rooted with your church. Um, right. All those other videos, all those other podcasts, <laughs> as a podcast I'm saying this and speaking for the pastors, um, that uh, um, there's one pastor who has taken an oath and is accountable to God for your soul. And it's not the one with the best Facebook page. And Amen. so so I think it's really important to stay rooted with your church. And if you don't have a church, this is a good time where you can look for one. <laughs> you know, you and can no hear messages. And no pastor is out. perfect. Right. Right. You can clean up um, a lot of the audio as Peter can so am- amply uh demonstrate with this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> he makes us sound so good. <laughs> I, I, I cause maybe someday we can do some more live events and would meet listeners, but I'm afraid that if we ever met listeners like who've never met us before, that they would be sorely disappointed at us. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Number five. This is a good time to reevaluate your own priorities and, and find out what's important. This kind of happened when 9-11 happened and people did that. It lasted for a very short time. Um, but uh, it really is a good time to, to, to consider what really is important. So, mm-hmm. Number four. This is also a good time to start some new traditions that are good. And if you think about it, Berg, it is usually times like this that we get the best hymns. Yep. Historically speaking, a lot of times it is times like this that has made the church stronger because... Uh, all the wishy-washiness of the world seems to burn away. The church tends to grow in times of persecution. Um, and so it's a good time to start some, some, some good things in your own congregation, whether it's um, checking up uh, on the elderly and, and those type of things. There are all sorts of things that maybe you can use in your home, for example. That's when you're thinking of starting with home devotions and and, and, and trying to get more involved, because that really is a struggle for all, all families, even a lot of pastor families. So, so um, all of those things could be involved in, uh, in using this time to, to start some new things that are good and helpful and wise um, that this gives you a time to, to do. Number three. Get away from your electronics, except for the Clerical Errors podcast, of course. Ha. Huh. <laughs> um. Because uh, um, I think a lot of times with the social media, people are getting um, even more lonely sometimes. And, and, um, and uh, if you, I know I find myself when I'm supposed to be working, I'll start, I'll just check on the coronavirus numbers and then I get worried and then I get sucked into Google rabbit holes. And then, and then like 45 minutes later, I just need to let it go. 
but uh, uh, I mean, you s- call people certainly. Real voice connection might be good, but but sometimes to get away from your cell phone might actually be kind of a healthy thing. I'm but, in. But listen to the Clerical Airs podcast. Of course. Number two. I already miss my members. <laughs> I yep. already miss my people. And it's been a short time. And I and uh, I was telling Vicker, I've been a little more sad about it. At first it was a shock, you know, okay, okay, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. And then it kind of sinks in and like, this really stinks. I want, I want things the way they, they were. <laughs> so that's yeah. just a personal thing, I suppose. And number one. The most vulnerable um, in our churches don't actually have the Internet. And the reason, you know, we talked a lot about Internet, right, and using yep. those things. And that's what worries about me is that um, I'm really afraid that we're going to be isolating people. And isolating the people that that need us the most. Um, that's a fear I have. Uh, most of the people I think that really um, need the church and, and need the comfort are those who don't have a have a flip phone, you know, you know? or are in a nursing home or have trouble even using a phone. And um, that's one thing that I, I worry about: is the, the most vulnerable are the ones in this who don't actually have an internet or a way of all the way the churches are jumping to use all these things. And yet, you know, there's a, a large portion who, who can't physically or mentally aren't able to, or for, um, for some reasons, maybe the, they found that having internet access is bad for them. And then, Oh, you want to be a part of the church? Well, then you got to do all these things on the internet and it's, they found in their own personal life that it's an awful thing thing to, to actually do too much on the internet. So that's kind of one of my, my fears in all this is that, that we, we wind up isolating um, uh, those who need us the most. Any thoughts, Berg? Nope. I think you summed it up. All right. Those are my 12 uh, just thoughts on this stuff. I hope that's not too general. I just want to get some of that stuff off my chest. Good stuff. All right, so uh, that brings us to, uh, um, you know, you know, it would be a good time is just to to virtually gather around that that fireplace, indeed. Um, get that fire cracking. Peter, play the intro. Gather around, everyone. Time for campfire catechesis. All right, the the I booted up the fire. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's roaring. Uh, I hope the, the 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 cops don't think that we're gathering gonna grab them because you you build a fire. You gotta notice this with our uh, Easter vigil service. We start off with, off with a fire outside, uh-huh. and uh, and uh, like men who are kind of like who are there like ten or fifteen minutes early, they just naturally just kind of gather around it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, all right. So, what do you got, Firstberg? All right, so uh, today I thought, you know, because most of us have to be at home now um, and we can't gather together, um, you know, in uh, divine service like we would want to or even Sunday school, uh, I think we could take this as an opportunity to really uh, dig in and talk about the home altar, uh, also known as home devotions, right? This is something that has fallen by the wayside uh, in in most families, unfortunately. Um, A lot of times we we think about... um, Sunday school as being uh, the way to do this or or whatever and it's not Um, all those things are a supplement to what parents ought to be doing at home with their children we see this at the head of every section of um, of the uh, small catechism right as the head of the family or the house father uh, should teach his children in a simple way that this is the primary and fundamental duty of a parent of a mother or a father, and that is to teach their children the Christian faith. Um, There is no greater thing you can do. There is no greater way that you can please God than to train your children in the Christian faith. It's a big responsibility, but it really is a a wonderful, wonderful thing. 
So how do you do it? I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people want to know how to do this. They've maybe never even thought about doing this before. So how does this work? How does this, you know, play out? Um, for my members, I mean, a lot of this is going to sound familiar. And I've actually um, kind of modeled my Sunday school opening on how moms and dads should do home devotions. Um, first, you know, start with a hymn right? It could be the hymn of the day or something you want to teach the kids, right? Then mm -hmm. move to the Ten Commandments. Just recite the Ten Commandments every single day, right? And then move to the Creed, the Apostles' Creed. Have them recite that baptismal creed again and again and again, right? And, and can, I, can, I, can I iterate something here? Please. If you don't mind me in, in, interjecting. And, and that is um, um, the earliest you start, the better. Because if they get to a certain age, it, it's going to seem really awkward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and so so if you, not that you shouldn't start when they're older, you definitely should, but at the same time, um, um, to start, like, before they're even talking, right. get them used to it um, and get you used to it um, so that uh, they're kind of growing up in it. So, go ahead. Right. Do it while they're still young when memorizing is fun, you know, um, and when their impressionable brains can really just absorb this stuff because you should. If you haven't done this before, you should start doing this now, but just know that you're going to have the added temptation of them rolling their eyes and saying, this is stupid. And, uh, you know, the more trouble you can save yourself, the better. So, Recite the Ten Commandments. You should be able to recite them by heart, and your kids, you know, will too. And if you can't, start by just simply reciting it and just keep reciting it again and again and again. And then you will learn these things by heart. Because as a Christian, this is how we examine ourselves. We examine ourselves according to the Ten Commandments. Um, the same thing with the Apostles' Creed. You know, what has God done for me? Um, this, is, this is what I believe, right? This is what I trust in. Uh, especially in times where I am in deep trouble, right? Like with COVID-19, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, what a wonderful thing to say, I believe in the light, in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. The rest of the world doesn't believe that. In fact, their world is ending because science can't stop this. Uh, this is spreading. Uh, people will be hospitalized or even die from this. But as Christians, we can take comfort in the resurrection. We can take comfort in the life everlasting, that this isn't the end for us, as it is for those who have no hope, which is a wonderful and comforting thing. See, that's why we learn the things when we're young uh, and when times are good. So when times are bad, um, you can really be comforted by this because you've already learned it. The next thing right. you can do that is just open your Bible, right? Um, if you have young children, you can use the... Uh, CPH uh, Story Bible. Uh, you can open up a regular Bible. It really doesn't matter. And just read a section uh, of, a, of a narrative. And what I mean by a narrative is a story, right? Read a, uh, you know, read a part of the Bible um, that actually has a beginning and an end, right? That actually follows some sort of plot, right? Don't start with Isaiah or anything like that. But maybe start with Genesis or the life of our Lord in the Gospels, okay? And when you do this, read this, and before you read it to your kids, think about it and say, okay, is this teaching me how I should live, right? Or how I have broken God's law? Okay, well, that fits among the Ten Commandments, right? So, for example, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, Remiskire, where the Canaanite woman approached our Lord. Um, that is a great way to teach about prayer, right? That'd be the Lord's mm -hmm. Prayer. You know, that uh, um, that God has commanded us to pray, and he has promised to hear us. Or uh, the sacrifice of Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. That teaches the first commandment. But it also teaches the second article, because it's a picture of how our Lord was uh, given up as a sacrifice on the cross, right? And so figure that out first, right? What part of the catechism is this teaching, right? And then read it with your kids. And then ask them very simple questions. What happened? Who was in this? Where, where did this happen, right? Especially if they're very little. And then from there on, as they grow up, uh, then start relating it. Because I think one thing that we try to do is we always try to go to application first. It's just a bad right. idea, 
right? Because then scripture just becomes a wax nose. No, actually answer the questions who, what, where, um, how, right? Um, mm -hmm. What happened, right? And when you can do that, then you can move on to the next point. That, that's uh, I think that's where a, a lot of uh, um, children's sermons, if church, when churches have children's sermons, that they often miss the point because... A lot of times it's less about what's actually going on. It's just more application and more like uh, object lessons that the kids really don't understand. And if, you know, when they get older and you want to teach them, it's really important to actually have the biblical literacy so that they can understand what you're teaching them a little bit more. And, and when they're younger, having the biblical literacy of understanding how to look things up in the Bible um, really then makes it easier then to, to go right into the, the doctrine teaching as they start to really understand that. Right. Um, you know, and I've I found this with other Lutherans too, you know, especially the older ones, you know. You ask them what the parables are about, and they're like, oh, well, this is Jesus just, you know, uh, explaining in a simple way what the kingdom of God is about. And it's like, no, read the text, right? Jesus says that he tells these things to hide them from the people, right? It's like... We're so quick to jump to our own assumptions and our own views on things that we don't actually read what the words say, you know. And this is how we should teach our kids, right? You have to set the foundation before you build the roof. And when you jump to application right away, well, what does this mean to me or blah, 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 right? Um, you, have, you have to actually believe, hey, this is true. This actually happened. These are really These are real people, right? And it might not always mm -hmm. have something to do with me, like directly, right? I'm mm -hmm. I'm not a king, right? David was a king, right? So <laughs> a, a lot of his life is not in that way going to be applicable to me, right? And how to be a good ruler, right? But I can learn other right. other things from that, right? And then if you mm -hmm. get really ambitious, um, you can actually do the fivefold application uh, of scripture that. Uh, St. Paul talks about in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, right? That scripture is given for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, right? It cha actually changes how we believe. Um, mm. Or uh, correction, right? Um, it corrects the way that we live. Uh, training in righteousness. How do I please God? And finally, for comfort, especially in distress, right? But that's for, uh, that, that's for older kids, right? Right. After and, and you've what laid I like about, all this, you know, foundation, you know, so. What I like about all, all that, and what you're saying is, is um, that uh, the scripture has to change their minds. <laughs> you know, I think when people think of Christianity, they look for a church that agrees with them rather than conforming themselves to what the word of God says. Right. And, and to... Uh, and then I think that's a big part of, 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 of Christianity is, is to, to uh, remember that it's God's word that is informing you and your opinions and not the other way around, which it really starts when they're, they're little. Right, because it's so much harder to do this when you're older. It really is, you know. And then after that, and you can read as short or as long as you want, you know. Sometimes it might be just a few verses, Sometimes, I mean, especially if you get older and really get used to this, it could be an entire chapter, right? Um, and, and maybe as the kids get older, you can have them read it, too, and then have the other children talk about it, right? Um, and and, and one, one thing that uh, all that teaches, too, is I hope I'm not interrupting you too much, Berg, um, but uh, is that um, uh, the... They learn a few things in that whole process, the children. One thing is they learn the information, but then they also see how important it is to you as a parent. You know, when they're right. little, they really do want to please their parents. And, and when they see that it is important to the parents, that the faith is really important to mom and dad, it, it really shows then it's important to them too. You know, even when they get older, um, uh, you know, Peter, I think, can vouch for, there is a desire um, to, to still uh, please mom and dad, you know, that yep. it, faith is important to them, and so it's also important to me. Is, am I stating that okay, Peter? 
sure as a producer you know <laughs> you know um i mean i look at myself i mean we always talked about the sermon on the way home after church even though we might not have done you know formal um home devotions you know and i'm advocating not that my folks did anything wrong i in fact they they gave me one of the best christian educations i i would put it against anything in the senate right the thing is is that we should always seek to surpass our parents we should always seek to improve what they what you know the foundation they laid right Mm -hmm. um you know and that's the thing is that if we if we show them that we love it and that it's important to us they'll love it too like you said you know and then after all of this is done, right, after you've, ex, you know, ex, you know, you've done some expository talking about this, right, and it's really not that hard, just tell your kids what it says. And as they get a little bit older, you know, um, relate it to one of the commandments, um, you know, or the creed or the Lord's Prayer or baptism or the Lord's Supper or whatever, right? You know, expand it just a little bit more. Right. Because even by, by the way, your your pastor models that every Sunday. In the sermon. Right. <laughs> he he's showing you that you know it's it, well I can't do that I'm not very good at that well, well look at what the pastor does he reads a text and he tells you what it means he applies it to you now he's trained to do that right Be- because he preaches but but you can certainly look at how your pastor does that and you can start to do some of that very easily in the home. Right. I mean, you know, you did this in grade school. You know, your teacher asked you, well, what was it about? Who was in it? Right? What happened? It's the same. It's really the same sort of thing. You know, don't be scared of it. Just try it. Right? If your kids don't understand anything, like you might have to explain to them, like, what a loom is or what a thresh, you know, or what threshing is or, or those sort of things. Right? And if you don't know, uh, we have this great thing called Google. You know, I mean, we can actually look it up, which is really awesome, right. you know. And so, you know, OK, so after all that, right, after this, and it doesn't have to be long and just do it according to your ability. If all you can do is tell them what the text says, you've done your job, right? And if they have any questions, then you can go to the pastor, right? And after all that, pray. First and foremost, pray the Lord's Prayer. That's the prayer our Lord gave us, Right. When the disciples ask Jesus, how do we pray, right? Teach us to pray. Jesus gives them the Lord's Prayer, right? And, mm-hmm. it, and if you want, you know, there are plenty of prayers in the Lutheran service book or in TLH or, or all these sorts of things, right? That if you want to add prayers, that's wonderful. However, I think one of the best ways to do this, to pray, uh, is to take the text you just read and use that as the basis of your prayer. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, um, that way you're not praying out of the poverty of your own heart, but you're praying from God's word. So, for example, um, I talked a little bit about uh, the Canaanite woman asking Jesus to heal her demon-possessed daughter. So you can start this way. Dear Jesus, right? It's an invocation, okay? And then you go to the basis for your petition. So what happened in the text? Dear Jesus... Um, you uh, ignored the Canaanite woman when she was pleading with you, and yet at the end you answered her prayer, right? Because that's what happened, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And then you go to your petition. What are you asking for? Um, You can ask for, teach us uh, to ask uh, boldly in your name, right? Just as she did, right? Or grant us the faith to ask boldly in her name. Or, uh, you know, as this woman did, right? And then you end with, you know, in your name we pray, amen, right? Very, mm-hmm. pretty easy, right? Same thing mm-hmm. with, uh, um, oh, I don't know, throw out any text. You can, you know, anyone can do this, right? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, or, the Annunciation is um, coming up, right? Where we mm-hmm. can say, you know, Heavenly Father, uh, you sent the prophet Isaiah to comfort Ahaz, when he was being uh, um, w- when he was being uh, uh, attacked by the Syrians and Israel, you know, um, comfort us uh, with the blessing of your son. In your name, we pray. Amen. Right. Or the feeding of the five thousand. Right. Right. So, what would your prayer be for that? Uh, Lord, Lord Jesus, as 
you fed those who came to hear your word, so feed us as uh, and care for our needs as we remember your faithfulness and we hear your word. Amen. Right. In the name of Jesus. You know, and guys, we don't have any of these prepared. You know, this is uh, right off the top of our heads, if you haven't noticed, right? So, you know. But we have been doing this a long time. We have. We have. <laughs> and that's the thing. You could you could be doing this too, right? All this is, mm-hmm. it's not like we're smart. <laughs> it's not like we're all that great. It's, we've simply been doing this a long time. And guess what? You can get to where we are by practice, right? Anything new is scary. Anything new can be difficult, but you can do this. And you can you be this, just bro. as awesome as we are, which isn't that awesome. <laughs> so don't shoot no. for that. You can and maybe be better you. Than I'm not are. very awesome. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I am awesome. <laughs> well, very good. So uh, let's do some emails. All right. What do we got for us? Peter. Is it cl- Confound the Clerics or? Yep. Peter, play that intro. Confound the Clerics. All right, we have a ton of emails to get through here. Uh, well, first of all, I suppose it's not really an email, but I, I wanted to show this off. So uh, a few weeks ago now, because we haven't I haven't been here w- with you guys together for a recording. Uh, back in the Surrealism episode, episode 49, we talked about memes. Yes. And uh, one of the, th- the things we talked about in that episode was I was going to make a surreal meme. And then we, were, we wanted to record uh, Pastor Berg's reaction to our surreal meme. Because he wasn't here. He wasn't here. So, Pastor Berg, do you know what a surreal meme is? No, I have no idea. All right, this will be great then. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you guys in the Discord here. We're gonna get your live reaction. You ready? Can you see the Discord there? Uh, can you make me see the Discord, Peter? Yeah, I I will make you see it. Ha. <laughs> All right, but Pastor Berg, you got it open, right? It's in. I'm about to send okay, it. Okay, I I've got Discord open. I'm waiting. All right, with here we go. Breath. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Preach, brother. Is that a tennis ball? There's like a. Uh, actually, I, I I think it kind of looks like the new pastor in our circuit, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm trying trying to look at at my picture, Peter. That's not. I don't even know what it, church that's that not is. The most... That's not my church. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just searched your name on Google and, and this image And it shows up. me preaching somewhere that I don't recognize. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, if mine says, oh no, and Berg says, everything is okay. That doesn't and sound like so, me. <laughs> so, what is going on here, Berg? <laughs> It's pretty surreal, but I like it. So we got to figure out what it means, though. There's something in here that... All right, Peter, you're going to have to explain this to us. It's a, it's a surreal meme. So there is no meaning. Oh, Usually oh no. there's so much no. meaning. You just have to draw it out. All the, right. the meaning is what you make of it. All right. I, I, uh, uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, we have this associate producer, Hannah. I think this is going to be right in her wheelhouse. Hannah, if you're listening, um, Hannah, we want you to record, if you have that capability, what this a, a description, an explanation of what this meme means. Do you think, do you think Hannah can do that? Oh, I bet she can. If she, if she can do that and send me a, a clip of it, we'll put her in the podcast next week. How about that? All right. Sounds awesome. All right. So, Hannah, uh, Peter will be sending this to you. And, uh, and um, Peter, will you work it out with her? 
Oh, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, she's pretty good at getting in contact with me, so, well, I'm going to put this beam out, because it's no fun to just leave it for you two, right? <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to put this out on the Facebook and uh, uh, Twitter. And ask people to so explain So, who made what this, this meme again? I made you... it. <laughs> <laughs> so, put... <laughs> <laughs> that's dedication man it is so that yeah took me like an hour it, <laughs> it doesn't look like it did but it definitely took a while <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah it looks like i'm yawning it looks so serious <laughs> yeah so where are you have you figured it out yet or do you know what so i think it's a i'm relatively old picture right i i my guess is See, it's Lent. I remember we had a brother that w- took a trip to Lithuania, and I had to do his midweek Lenten service. So I'm so, guessing it's from maybe Hubbard? Here's the original picture, if this helps. Huh. Looks like you've got like a, a marble oh. pulpit. Does that look it's like old, it's an older picture? I don't even. I think. So, listeners, too, if you know where that is, <laughs> Oofta. I think I'm at Camp Iodesica. Okay, I'm wondering, like, did I take an Ambien and preach a sermon somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Huh. Well, anyway, so but that was wait, our... Wait, 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 go back. There are, but the interesting thing is there's flowers, and I'm preaching, and it's Lent. Hmm. So it could be a funeral. Yeah. Hmm. Ah. Interesting. Oh. Well. <laughs> I just love your face. Hmm. <laughs> I am... I don't know where that is. Eldora? Yeah. Could it be an installation? I, no, not during Lent. What do you mean, not during Lent? Oh, I was thinking ordination. Uh, I, is it, maybe that could be held. I don't know. Listener, if you know where that is, let us know. It's it's not a new picture. I can I tell by your hair. I don't know where that is. <laughs> I don't know where that is. I don't. <laughs> All right, that's going to get cut down considerably. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. All right, so let's tackle a question. <laughs> I'm already confounded. <laughs> so we got a, an email from the associate producer, Hannah. She says, hello, clerics. Was the thief crucified with Jesus baptized previous to his crucifixion? I'd always heard him used as an example of a person achieving salvation apart from baptism. But in my recent research about baptism, I'm finding that may be an unfounded assumption. Related, what is a patriarchal dispensation? Um, so let's start with the thief on the cross. cross. Um, yep. My, he could have obviously maybe been baptized by John, right? Yep. Um. My understanding is when it comes to whether he was baptized or not, remember that it is faith that saves. And um, let's say uh, something happened and, and Jesus died and the earthquake happened and he was still alive and he fell off the cross and ran away. I would assume that after that happened, he would be baptized. He would go find, he would have been baptized. Um, what, are you, what, are, what, are, what are you thinking, Berg? I guess my thoughts are on it are, you know, baptism hasn't been instituted yet as a Christian sa- sacrament, yeah. you know? Right. And the thing right. is, is that if this man is a Jew, then he was circumcised. So I don't, act- right. I don't actually think it's the best example. I, the best example for uh, dying apart from the sacraments, I think, happens uh, to David's son, who dies right. before, ba- before he is circumcised. And that is why he is called the child. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but God hears David's prayers for him. Um, so 
that's the thing is that uh, if we're going to use examples, we should actually use the uh, the right kind of examples, right? And this is where our Lutheran fathers made a distinction between what is absolutely necessary and what is an what is called an ordinal necessity, right? Our confessions mm-hmm. say that baptism is necessary, right? That he who is baptized, who believes and is baptized, will be saved, right? But he who does not believe will be condemned, right? That uh, faith is the absolute necessity. You need faith to be saved. However, if you believe, you're going to be baptized, unless something right. like cray cray, to use the technical term, happens. <laughs> so, is that Latin? <laughs> I want to say yes. American ease, um, maybe. Right. So an example of this, practically speaking, right? If um, if someone desires to be Christian and they want to be baptized and they're adult, what do you do first? You teach them. Right. Because, because you, you know, if you're teaching them the faith and something happens and they die, you're, they're there learning the faith, learning the word of God because of there is a, a budding, growing faith. Right. And and you do it afterwards because you want to make sure they understand the faith in which they are being baptized. Um and so be you do and so they're now you shouldn't, you know, take your time and you should they want to be baptized and so you, you do it uh you don't you don't dilly dally. But uh but uh the idea is that they do have faith in that process. Right. And uh, and you're right. Jesus instituted baptism at the in, in Matthew 28. Right, which is um, right before he ascends into heaven. Right. So that is after his death. Right. For anyone who um, wasn't clear. And the, <laughs> all right. So, what is patriarchal dispensation? I have no idea. Um, and we don't have vicar. All right. Here. All right, I'm going to text Vicar, see if he knows. <laughs> All right. All right, good idea. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, so I think I know. But... Berg, tell, 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 a, tell a, a joke while I text Vicar. <laughs> uh, what do I want to say? I don't know. Patriarchal dispensation, right? Um, it Dispensation talks about a, a period of time, right, that... Uh, uh, under which people live. Um, so, for example, uh, for the uh, what we call the dispensationalists, they have seven periods of time, uh, and they, they spread it out via dispensations, and they often use it to mean, like, how are these people saved, right? Right. Um, if you just look at it as a period of time, I can actually get behind this. The patriarchal dispensation is the time of uh, really from after the flood— uh, mm-hmm. down to, well, really to Moses, right? Uh, because right. Um, patriarchal means father rule, right? Patri meaning father and arch meaning mm-hmm. ruler, right? This is where the, right. the fathers ruled Arch-ain. their house, right? And uh, mm-hmm. they were not only um, the fathers of, you know, the family, but they were also um, the priests, and so Abraham does sacrifices, Isaac does sacrifices, gives blessings and the like, right? Same thing with with, uh, with uh, Jacob, for example. So the dispensation that's talked about here are, are those who live uh, before the Mosaic law is given, right? Which actually puts mm-hmm. Israel under, um, binds Israel under sin, you know, to show them that how much they need a Savior, right? And so the patriarchs do things sometimes that are not, all that great, um, like Abraham marrying his half sister, right, which would have been forbidden under the Mosaic Law, right, mm-hmm. um, and they do things that would later be forbidden um, under the Mosaic Law. Only the Levites could sacrifice and be priests, right? There, right. it was the oldest son. Um, the problem with talking about dispensations is that what other people mean by it is that this is like. There are actually different ways of being saved depending on what period of time you live in. Right. Right. Um, and 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 you you can uh, I think Hebrews helps clear clarify that issue. It, it does, and that's why if we're going to talk about one dispensation, 
I mean, I believe in one dispensation. It's the dispensation of the gospel, right? Even right. though the law was given as an adjunct on Mount, it was given as an adjunct on Mount Sinai, right? Um, mm-hmm. It was to confine all under sin, so that God might have mercy on all. Um, it was to and, it was to set Israel apart. It was to show them how much they needed a savior, right? So, right. And, and I think you, you, you described this one time, which I found very fascinating, is when, when you talked about Noah and uh, how close Noah was actually to, to Adam. Like, they were, there weren't that many, much time between Noah and Adam and many generations between those two where... Right, so Lamech, first... uh, Noah's dad, was right. 56 when Noah died. And so Lamech would have probably known Enoch... You know, he would have known all these guys, right? And then right. Noah would have lived 350 years after the flood, right? So, and Shem, who is Noah's son, is still alive when Abraham is running around, right? So from there, you have two links of Lamech and Shem uh, who connect Adam all the way down to Abraham, which is fascinating and amazing. It's fa- fascinating. So it might seem like all that time where God was seemingly silent and there's no way, way they could know when, you know, it reminds me of uh, when I was first a pastor. Um, uh, I had a member, a and I would go see, and her father fought in the Civil War. Wow. Did that blow your mind? Yeah. And so you think, oh, that's history. I actually heard stories about the Civil War that she heard from her father. That blew your mind. Yeah, it's amazing. Now imagine uh, a guy telling about you know, eleven hundred A.D. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or uh, or you know, someone fr- who was born in fifteen hundred telling uh, about his his father's uh, stories from the fall of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Can you imagine? I just, it's so great. I. But you see, we don't live as long, you know, and this is why God uh, made us live as long as well, at that time, you know, so that way the gospel could be passed from from mouth to mouth, and you know, it just didn't, you know, from father to son, and we can see how well that worked out, which means it didn't, you know. So right. All right. Well, uh, thank you for the question. I think our time is running short now. So closing comments here, uh, we should mention. I'm sure everybody has heard this from other places, but it's it's always a good idea to hear it once again. Uh, tips for dealing with COVID-19 coronavirus. Wash your hands consistently. Disinfect consistently. Uh, try and stay at least six feet away from people. Social distancing. If you can stay at home, do it. Uh, don't go out and buy all the toilet paper. Amen. You don't need all that toilet paper. Mm-hmm. Buy one pack. Mm-hmm. And uh, just be safe and think about it. Remember, it only takes one mistake to get infected and then you and spread it to all of your loved ones. That's not something you want to do. That's why everything is shutting down. That's why we're not having church because we're trying to keep you guys safe. And, uh, and I think that's important because there is a struggle, right, Berg, with all this between church and state. Right. Uh, and uh, um, I think it's important to realize that the state is trying to keep us safe. I don't think they're trying necessarily to curb. The one thing I would say is this, though, is uh, when they talk about essential services, you know, um, there might be some argument about what's essential right. f- for us. So, yeah. So wash, pray, quarantine. Yeah, sounds <laughs> yep. like a T-shirt. <laughs> we'll get right on that. <laughs> All so, right. So, we'll we'll do our best to keep going with the podcast. We we've got it worked out here where we are remote now. Everything's working out just fine, it seems to be. Well you have All right. yeah, and, you uh, haven't put it together. We still yet, haven't so. made our uh, Talks and Tasty's award show. If you have any suggestions, let us know. And uh and uh if you have anything you want us to to share, you know how to get a hold of us on Facebook. Clerical Errors Podcast on Facebook, Clerical Errors Clerical P, P for Podcast, at me bro on Twitter, 
And, um, and uh, thank you for listening. And email us at feedback at clericalheirs.org. All right. So I am Bullhagen. And I'm Brig. And I'm Peter. And may your family be healthy and your hands sanitized. Thank you for joining us. This podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Questions, thoughts, concerns? You can contact us on Facebook at facebook.com slash clerical heirs podcast, on Twitter at clerical heirs P for podcast, or email us at feedback at clerical Thanks for listening to clerical heirs. See you next time.